and welcome back to Creative Live. I am Kate Dessa. You should be getting to know my face by now. I am here in Las Vegas, and I'm so excited to introduce our newest class, Minimalist Photography with Curtis Jones. So if you are tuning in, make sure you tell us where you're tuning in from. We're going to help you cool off from this hot summer. Uh, Curtis's class is all about minimalist photography, uh, and it takes place in Newfoundland, Canada, mostly, a little bit in the Arctic, and we're going to see a lot of snow uh, and beautiful minimalist photos. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Pamela, hey, how's it going from Rhode Island? Make sure you tell us where you're joining as well. And Curtis, welcome to the stream. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Yeah, we're so, so excited for this class. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited to talk a little bit more about minimalist photography. The class is full of beautiful visuals. Um, and I'm excited to get our community acquainted with you, Curtis. You are a new instructor. Um, and, you know, it's it's really exciting to have a, a, a new face to join our uh, Creative Live family. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Curtis. Well, I'm uh, an outdoor landscape and, and uh, adventure photographer. I do quite a bit of travel, uh, a lot of travel for work. Um, I, uh, I'm an educator, photo educator uh, from Canada, uh, from Newfoundland and Labrador. And I spend a lot of my time in very cold environments, polar regions like the Arctic and the Antarctic. Awesome. And so Curtis uh, is, like he said, he uh, is an outdoor adventure photographer. Uh, he spends most of his time in cold weather, and that's where most of this class takes place. So uh, just to get our, our audience a little bit acquainted with you, Curtis, we are going to play a little video. Uh, Curtis has a, a great YouTube channel. He's getting started, and we have a little intro into getting to know Curtis as an instructor who's uh, not only a beautiful uh, photographer and captures amazing uh, photos and is a great instructor, but he's got a little personality that you're going to want to watch as well. So let's play the video and get to know you a little bit better, Curtis. That one off the list fell in the bog. The basic idea is going to be me, Newfoundland outdoors, camera, and hopefully some fun for you guys. And uh, I want to make it as dynamic and interesting and interactive as possible. So, just as my folks predicted, they wanted to get out here early because the weather, weather, the weather was going to start. The weather. I mean, there's always weather, but in Newfoundland, it's the weather. And you know what it means when my parents' generation says, the weather is about to start. Eat in over the highway before the weather starts. Look, look at how foolish this is. This is so messed up that I got so tangled and, and messed up when I was trying to put this tripod in the right position. And it's still not exactly where I want it that I somehow made it such that the camera body actually is mounted upside down. But you know what? That is the beauty of the rotation tool. So I'm going to shoot this photograph upside down. i got my waterproof pants on today because it's incredibly sunny out. I like dressing ironically. But you never know. It is Newfoundland in the spring of the year. so. I could be up to me tits and rain in five minutes from the car. So I got out of that cave because I was cold and basically a torrent of rain going down my back and into my undercarriage. Uh, 
um, so I came out into the sun. And as I started to pack my gear up, I remembered that I brought hot coffee and a warm puffy jacket with me. Rah! This is a little segment I like to call Curtis Warms the Frig Up. Oh no, I stepped on my cord. Uh, you have one job, cord. Survive. Oh, this is a foggy disaster. Here's hoping the coffee's still warm. It's not. As you can see, Curtis is not a dry instructor. He is a, a really fun instructor. Thank you so much for sharing these little bloopers and outtakes with us, Curtis. Um, you know, I, like I said, Curtis Jones is a new instructor, so we wanted you guys to get a little acquainted with not only what he's gonna teach you, but his personality and get you guys excited to watch something that's gonna be entertaining and educational. So, uh, Curtis, tell us a little bit about why you wanted to make this class. Um, so, it's funny, it's sort of accidental, my love of minimalist photography. I, I moved to the Arctic a bunch of years ago and I was taking photos and just for myself and for friends and to show family at home and stuff. And uh, just by default, I mean, the place is so stark that all the photos ended up looking quite clean and simple. Uh, and so people started commenting on that. And when I put them all together and started making slideshows and showing them to bigger groups, it became very clear that, uh, yeah, the, the landscape sort of lent itself to that, but I was also really seeing the place that way. And it felt like the most honest representation uh, of the way I saw the Arctic at the time, and that's kind of where it all started. And so when the opportunity to to reach a larger audience and to talk more and to write about minimalist photography came up, it, it kind of uh, sparked this desire in me to not only talk about minimalist photography because I really love it so much, but also to talk about the places that I go to shoot this kind of work because I love those places as well, and they go hand in hand. They're very I mean, it's very connected for me, at least the places where I shoot minimalism and the actual style itself. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this class takes mostly, uh, takes place mostly in Newfoundland and uh, a little bit in the Arctic, um, Antarctica, excuse me. Um, is that where, you know, you tend to gravitate when you're shooting minimalist photography? Are you looking for those really vast, um, you know, kind of open, snowy, uh, landscapes and then you know I've noticed you also do a little bit with a lot with the ocean as well so you kind of have these kind of vast um, kind of never-ending landscapes is that what you gravitate towards when you're looking for a scene for minimalist photography definitely I definitely do I think it's it's for me personally it's easy it was easier to start with that because that's where I found myself quite often and those are the spaces I like to be in I like feeling mm -hmm. small in really big spaces and kind of being humbled by nature. Uh, so it, it already was set up for that kind of view, I guess. Um, it's been more difficult over the years to, to apply minimalist techniques to busier, more cluttered uh, places. And I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about uh, urban landscapes and stuff, but for me, I didn't grow up, say, in the mountains. So anytime I go shoot mountains, uh, I find it quite a bit more difficult to get clean images but so but it's it's nice because it's it's been a really cool transition and evolution to be able to apply all this minimalist technique to like a, basically any scenario but in an ideal world i'll always gravitate to big open oceans like infinite horizons snowy landscapes that's kind of where my heart is that's where i want to be and that's kind of uh it's also kind of where i find when i'm thinking about this kind of photography i feel the most sort of clear-headed and i i it comes out in the work, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, when I was rewatching this class, um, you know, I I live in an urban area, but you bring up so many points throughout the class that allowed me to like narrow my my viewpoint of um, all the all the distractions that are you know whether they're in your house or um, you're out shooting or in your yard. It's you really teach us how to. 
narrow our field of view in a way that uh, you don't have to be in the Arctic in this vast um, infinite horizon. You can really start to um, train your eye to declutter, which then allows you to, to capture those shots, which is, is a really cool thing. And it, it's a class that applies to really any scene. Yeah. And, and that simple exercise, even if you don't take a photo, I find just kind of it, it helps me. I, I enjoy that outlook on my daily life, kind of stopping, yeah. slowing things down and really honing in on something and just taking a moment, whether I take a photo or not. But yeah, you can really start using it almost anywhere. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of correlated it to, um, you know, mindfulness and just presence um, mm -hmm. and being really aware of all the things around you. And that allows you to really declutter your mind and your view of the world when you start to really kind of live in the present. And I think this class um, evoked that emotion in me in a way that uh, I, I wasn't expecting. You know, I was expecting to watch a photography class and it was really a, a class that helped me, uh, you know, train my eye that helped me declutter my mind in the same, in the same sense. Well, that's great to hear because that's, that's how I feel when I'm doing it, so. Yeah, well, it, it resonated and I know it's gonna resonate with our audience too. So um, I'm just gonna remind everyone you're watching the live premiere of Curtis Jones' brand new class, Minimalist Photography. And we're talking all about um, minimalist photography today. Uh, and I'm going to do a few shout outs. So tell us where you're tuning in from. We have uh, Bill Edwards. Hey, Bill. We have Renee from Canada. We have Leonardo from Italy. We have Georgia, uh, Houston, Texas, China, Iowa, Rhode Island, all over the world. So welcome again, everyone. Thank you for joining the live stream of Curtis's brand new class. Um, we're going to take a little peek. We're going to pop into the class and watch a little clip out um, that kind of speaks exactly to what we were just talking about, Curtis, which is really narrowing your field of view and understanding how to declutter not only your perspective, but um, kind of figuring out the right time and uh, you know, time and not only in terms of day, but the time that is going to be the least cluttered when it comes to weather as well. So let's let's watch that little clip. I really love this time. A snowstorms, the edge of weather, big fog banks. This kind of stuff is actually paradise for me. I've seen this location a dozen times. Uh, I walk by it almost every second day. So I knew that there was a shot here to be had if the conditions presented themselves. It was simply a matter of being aware of weather that was coming in and being available to go out and shoot when it hit. One of the first things I did was to check out a few different angles and perspectives. Even though I had an idea of what I wanted to take, I wanted to make sure that I was getting the cleanest frame possible and I wasn't missing something. Once I found an angle that I liked, I backed up a little bit and started trying a few different positions. In the end, to minimize a lot of the footprints in the snow and the distractions in the foreground, I decided to get really, really low. And I'll do this a lot. I'll lay my camera in the sand, in the mud, in the snow, anything to get that nice clean foreground. You can see that even though the snowfall is handling about 90% of the visual distraction in the shot, I did decide to go from my telephoto lens to frame out some of the neighboring buildings and this beach debris. Something else to keep in mind when you're shooting with a lot of fog or snow like this, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on your histogram and make sure you're not blowing out any highlights. Your camera's gonna to wanna to expose a little dark because there's so much brightness coming in, so try half a stop to a stop higher than zero. Here's just a reminder of what this looked like without the snow, the shot on a beautiful blue sky day. So much clutter, there's so much going on, there's so much information. Even with a telephoto or changing your perspective, it would have been really hard to get a nice, clean, minimalist shot. So here's the final shot, showing just how powerful waiting for weather and picking your moment can be when cleaning up a location. All 
All right, so there you have it. There's a little bit of a teaser for you all um, of what some, some of the beautiful landscapes you're gonna get to see in the class and some of the uh, things that Curtis is gonna teach you. So Curtis, you know, in this little clip, you kind of talk about, like I mentioned, um, finding the right time of day, but also finding, you know, you talk about the weather um, being, you know, are you getting out before the weather you mention a lot in the class and so kind of what what goes into your mindset when you're going out and shooting and looking to shoot a minimalist shot what are all the things that you kind of have to check off your check you know your to-do list before you're like okay it's a good time to go out and capture something yeah i think that a lot for me personally and i i would imagine everyone's going to have their own approach and what works but I often will notice subjects just from, you know, living in an area or a town or going on hikes or running errands and realize that they have potential to be pretty strong subjects. But often the thing that holds me back from shooting it is just the massive amount of visual clutter that's going on and surrounding them. So a lot of the times it's as simple as me taking a shot with my cell phone or whatever I happen to have on me to kind of catalog it and then knowing especially if it's a place I'm familiar with, um, like Nunavut, um, knowing that if I just wait for a better day, and in most cases it's gonna be snow or fog or something like that, uh, and it'll help really do most of the heavy lifting, and I won't I won't have to uh, rely on Photoshop or anything like that to like declutter a scene or, or take image or take you know objects out or whatever. So yeah, it starts with finding a subject, knowing that it has potential, I guess, and then being familiar with an area really helps, you know, and, and being slightly obsessed with, you know, following weather and stuff like that. If you're if you're into <laughs> outdoor photography and, and landscape photography, you're probably doing that anyways. You know, you're waiting for moon rises and, you know, sunrise times and sunsets and looking, you know, using photo pills or apps like that and, uh, you know, checking local weather forecasts. So all that stuff is super important. And I'm constantly and even if it's not my plan for the day, as soon as you know, one of these storms rolls in or a big bank of fog is coming in over the ocean on the East Coast, I'll usually try to put everything else on hold and just run out and try to get that shot that I you know, captured on my cell phone, knowing, hopefully, fingers crossed, that it would make a strong minimalist image. Yeah, awesome. And, you know, um, so just to reacquaint everyone, Curtis is our newest uh, instructor. He is an educator and you do photo tours. So when you do photo tours, are you taking people out, um, you know, looking for a minimalist perspective or are your photo tours um, more catered to just outdoor photography? Yeah, it's it's probably a little more catered to just uh, the the thing with the company. Our company is called Newfound Shores, and what we try to do is we we just want to get people outside and feel like you know there's a sense of adventure. And uh, my my whole thing is just trying to push people a little bit past their comfort zone. I don't want anyone to feel like they're being overwhelmed or it's scary. But I do like how it feels for myself personally when I get just a little bit further in the comfort uh, being outside. And so that's that's the number one thing that what I'm trying to do. And then, you know, the photography is the angle is the reason why we're all out there to create uh, and enjoy it. And then once we're out there, though, because it is such a big part of my portfolio, um, I will <laughs> sometimes push the minimalism angle a bit more on individual students or participants. <laughs> you know, uh, if it's nothing, they have zero interest, then I'm, I'm not going to you know talk about it. Obviously, I'm there to help people get the best shot and have a good time. Uh, but if you leave it up to me, yeah, I'll probably push minimalism on you at some point over a two or three day <laughs> workshop. Well, I'm, I'm glad we now have a minimalist class because now we can point people when, when they're not quite ready that you can point them to this new class and they can get yeah. their feet wet in, in minimalist photography. So, um, again, you guys are all watching the live kickoff of Curtis's brand new class. Make sure you're checking in with us. Tell us where you're tuning in from and drop us any questions that you have um, before the class kicks off at 930 sharp. Um, so I have a couple of questions coming in, Curtis, for you. Uh, Karen Quinn from Australia asks, when you shoot sea and ocean, do you use a huge landscape or zoom in? Um, and create shapes out of what you see, especially when you when it comes to waves and rocks. Yeah, so 
I definitely will most likely use a zoom or a telephoto if I'm looking for more minimalist wave shots or abstract wave shots. Um, it's it's like one of the simplest and easiest ways if you have a zoom to to simplify an image to clean it up is just to shoot past a lot of distractions. And I know typically with landscape photography, it's you know the 16 or the 20 or the 24 millimeter perspective is traditional. Uh, but for these cleaner images, it's a lot harder to declutter a scene when you've got that much coming into frame. So I'll often, yeah, shoot past all of that, concentrate on, yeah, I could sit on a beach and watch the ocean for hours and hours and just see, you know, how the light plays and how the waves roll and how it interacts, you know, coming back off a rock and things like that, that ebb and flow. So definitely I'm shooting with a longer lens most often for like the, the pattern or shape wave stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, all right. We have a few more questions coming in, so let's let's dive through them. Um, Danny Bailey asks, what type of gloves do you like do you wear when you work because it's so cold? That's a good question. And it's a question I get a lot. And I'm if I'm being completely honest, I have I have a history of not wearing gloves at all if I can get away with it. And I always have really warm gloves, obviously, or mitts um, with me. But often, unless it's absolutely frigid, uh, I'm going to probably just go, you know, with just regular non-gloved hands for as long as I can hack it. I don't know why that is. Uh, I guess maybe just years and years and years of being out. I know it's probably <laughs> not best for me. Uh, my fingers have suffered for it. But there's something about my way of handling the camera and the lenses. And it's just, I, you know, it's probably just habits after all this time. But if you are looking for like really good gloves, my suggestion, I don't really have a brand or anything like that to suggest, is just like try a bunch of different pairs in, you know, the coldest conditions and make sure that your uh, your cutoff point basically for saying it's too cold to shoot and I've got to go back inside or do something is like well before you think it should be. It's often when you start realizing that your fingers hurt or whatever, or you've gone way past the point of, you know, I should have stopped. Uh, yeah. but personally for me, if I am going to wear something, it's going to be a mitt, not a glove. I just have a hard time with the fingers being individually separated, uh, keeping, so I often will just like big warm gloves that are oversized that I can throw my hands into Then I'll take them out and I'll shoot really quickly. Then I'll stuff them back into the big warm gloves, <laughs> heat packs, stuff God, like that. I was going to say always. shooting with mittens sounds hard, but that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> Um, all right. So again, make sure you're dropping us our, any questions you have, and we're going to take a, a look at a few different photos from the class. Curtis, we talked a little bit, or you talk a little bit in the class about um, this exercise around negative and positive space. Um, and tell us a little bit about how you use negative and positive space to kind of visualize your shots. Sure. Um... It's, it's a really big part of minimalism photography. It's probably one of the, I would say it's probably the most important technique or theory piece from the perspective of understanding weight and balance and composition in minimalist images. Uh, and it's, it's simply, if anybody doesn't really know, it's just, it's just really simple that positive space is your subject and negative space is everything that kind of surrounds that subject. And the idea or the practice behind using negative space in this minimalism uh, photography is to to really concentrate on that space and how it can push your subject to the forefront uh it's it's really interesting to me anyways how when you when you start seeing the space that surrounds everything instead of the subject itself oftentimes the subject's not as important like it doesn't really matter what we're shooting so much as like how we shoot the space around it and where it's placed in the scene and yeah, the balance of how much of that space you use tells a completely different story uh, for very similar images. And it's, yeah, it can be very, very powerful. Uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming and tricky, but once you start seeing it and incorporating it, it doesn't even have to be uh, a minimalist photo, like a traditionally minimalist photograph. You're gonna start seeing how space is just going to clean up your images and limit distractions and you know get rid of visual clutter and all that. And you're just gonna get stronger images because of it. Yeah, and you're really going to uh, help people narrow wh what you want them to look at. Um, yeah, there's, there's nothing else really, to see. You know. 
when you when you use yeah. that negative space you, you, there's no avoiding what you want people to look at you know when when you do exactly. it exactly um and the other cool thing is that i find that it really helps because we spend so much of our time looking at the world a certain way and that way is just surrounded with constant information right there's if i look out past this you know a webcam or whatever i just see tons of things uh if i could get rid of every little thing and just concentrate on one thing that's that's basically using negative space to see that one thing and so when you shoot subjects like that or you start creating photographs that way you give people or your audience a chance to see the world a way that they're not really tuned into and that's why sometimes i feel these minimalist images people will often stop and look at them for an extended period of time and they find them calming or soothing or tranquil you know it it evokes all of this these sort of really pleasant you know mindful calm feelings i find because it's not how we're used to ingesting the world yeah absolutely we're you know our we have so many distracts distractions around us constantly that you know i think that's what captivates people with your photos so much is how how calming and soothing it is to not have all that clutter um, yeah. because we don't even realize how much our minds are cluttered while we're moving throughout the world every day and when you look at your shots you're like oh this is very like it's just it's calming and it's what it's what you wish you could walk through the world seeing but yeah, yeah, you know it's sure. possible in the world we, we live in no but we can grab moments Yes, exactly. So, um, Curtis, this stream went by so fast, we didn't even get a chance to look at some of the photos, but um, that's why you shall go over and watch the class. It is about to start at 9.30 sharp. And if you are watching on social media, make sure you tap that link in the caption, or I dropped a link in the comments, and I'll drop another one for you all. Um, right after the stream and then make sure you head over to creativelive.com and watch the class if you are watching on the class page make sure you refresh that page at 9 30 so you get it right at the class start it is streaming free today for 24 hours um curtis any last words tell us where we can keep up to date with what you're doing um where you know our our dear instructor lisa carney already dropped a link to your uh photography tours. So tell us where we can follow you, your Instagram, your YouTube, um, wherever we can keep up to date on what you're doing. Yeah, I, I think Instagram's a good place. Uh, C. Jones Photo on Instagram. Uh, my website is curtisjonesphoto.com. And then Curtis Jones Photography on YouTube, if you're looking for more shenanigans or foolishness out by the ocean. Uh, if that's what you're into and a little bit of photo education and some beautiful landscapes, then yeah, check out the YouTube channel as well. And uh, yeah, if anybody wants to come and do some photo tours on the East Coast and, and get up close and personal with some beautiful oceanscapes, uh, Newfound Shores, that's the, that's the company for the photo workshops. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this quick stream before your class kicks off. Again, it is a minimalist photography class. It starts at 9.30 sharp. So head over to watch the class and Curtis, thank you so much for joining the Creative Life family. We are so excited to have you uh, as a new instructor and can't wait to make another class with you. Thank you so much, Kate. And thank you, Creative Live, and everybody that watched and tuned in. It means yeah. a lot. We'll see everybody out in the class. Pursuing creativity is arguably the most practical thing that you can do. We humans are adaptation champions. That's what makes us human, our ability to imagine. The hard part is to look inside and say, what are my invisible beliefs that I have about money? I wanted to figure out how it actually worked. And you are really here because you became passionate about an idea. What does it take to capture great photographs of birds? You have to be grounded in your cameras. You need to understand the technology. Just like any band shoot, we're looking to capture great shots of the band themselves playing on stage. So the drummer shot, lead singer, guitarist. 
you even prepare to shoot with your phone? And then we're actually gonna go into the edit. Once you hit rock bottom, there's no place to go but up. You learn what, what's real. You learn what's needed. In astrophotography, there is a great deal more planning involved because you are literally shooting in the dark. We can't change others, but we can change our perspective. Wow, that's a good way to start the day. I had tears in my eyes.